These days, Israeli and American politics have a few things in common, and on top of that list, being deeply polarized. It's not tough to spot in targeting their rivals. The Israeli Prime Minister and his allies most often use one term, left wing. Joining the conversation now is Tamar Zandberg, whose Merits Party describes itself as the true representation of the Israeli left. Before we talk, here's one minute on who she is. Zandberg got her start in the Tel Aviv City Council before being elected to parliament in 2013 as part of the left-wing Merits Party. By March of last year, she had risen in the ranks, elected as the party's chair. Among her first actions as a lawmaker, joining the Women of the Wall group, advocating for women's right to pray at the Holy Western Wall. She's pushed for issues from legalizing marijuana to the cost of living protests of 2011. Zandberg has also been a prominent voice for public transport on the Jewish Sabbath, which is largely forbidden. A strong advocate for a two-state solution, Zandberg has said the number one existential threat to Israel is the occupation of the West Bank. Meretz held their first ever primary this month and is fighting to boost the party's influence after being in the opposition for nearly 20 years. And we are here with the head of the, the, head of the Meretz party, Tamar Zandberg, and editor-in-chief of Israeli on Boaz Bismut, of course. Uh, so, Tamar, thanks very much for being with us. Thank Let's talk big me. picture. We just saw this poll. Our poll shows merits with seven seats in parliament. Some of the other polls are showing four right on the threshold. But as a party, merits has been in the opposition for about 20 years. Do you think that there is a point where the party went wrong to not be in government for so long? It's very simple. Uh, merits is in the opposition when the government is right wing. Unlike many other parties, some of them center or even center left-leaning that found themselves during the last 20 years sit in uh, right-wing coalitions led by Prime Minister Netanyahu or others. So for Meretz, it's very, very clear. We see ourselves part of any center-left coalition and we see ourselves opposition to any right-wing coalition. So this, as, as we talked during yeah. the break, yeah. when you have an ideology, life is very, very clear and simple. Sometimes people look at that as a disadvantage because you know you're kind of the obvious. On the other hand, you know, how can you manage political lives without ideology but and without agenda. the ideology seems to be getting much less popular. I'm not sure, you know, the idea of peace, the idea of public transportation on Shabbat, the idea of women's rights, LGBT rights, grew much to a much popular support during the 20 years that Meretz fight uh, for these values. Um, it's true that Meretz is always, you know, ahead of the camp. Meretz is always leading the, the next uh, agenda, the one mm -hmm. that's going to be to become consensus in 10 years. This is why we are not uh, a 30 or a 60 seat mm -hmm. party. Um, but we, I don't think we're marginal or, or uh, irrelevant, or the contrary. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned the peace, and in 2015 campaign, we didn't see a lot, we didn't hear a lot of the peace uh, negotiations. We, for the timing, same here. Are you, Meretz, what's left of the real left? <laughs> First of all, uh, of course, yes, we are the left. It's not leftovers, it's, it's the left. Um, and I think peace is a very, very prominent agenda for us, very uh, important, because uh, the, the opposite of the absence of peace is the main threat to the sustainability of this country. And uh, thriving and pushing and uh, 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 not to mention not uh, disappearing or, or uh, uh, um, you know, blaring this issue uh, is, is, a, is a core issue for us. We see many right-wing parties mm -hmm. that say, you know, this is not, not even an important, it's not something to talk about. And unfortunately, we see some of the center left-leaning parties um, agreeing to that or dragging after that, saying, okay, we'll talk about some of the social issues, about the prices in the supermarket, leaving the, the number one, you know, watershed of Israeli politics aside. But in that watershed, we hear the Israeli government under Netanyahu for so many years saying that there is no real partner for peace. So uh, if that is the core of your ideology, of your policy issues, then who is the partner for peace? You know that uh, um, two years ago we celebrated uh, 120 years to the uh, to the beginning of the Zionist movement mm -hmm. that, that uh, um, made this country, you know, um, coming from a dream to, to reality. And uh, during those 120 years, the Zionist leaders knew to turn every stone, to open every 
door and every window, and those who got shut down, you know, the, we knew how to look for other uh, ways to get what we want and what is in our best interest. And now, the state of Israel is 70 years old, in the strongest position of the Jewish people ever, mm -hmm. one of the strongest armies in the world, a member of the UN, a member of the OECD, and now we hang the excuse for not uh, leading to peace on someone else who is much, much weaker than us. I think this is not acceptable. I think this, it is in the, in the basic interest of the state of Israel to turn every stone so every in the stone way to the peace. So every stone the Israeli government negotiate with Hamas, for example? The Israeli government does negotiate with Hamas. The question is, do they negotiate with Hamas on the money being transferred or on uh, uh, exchange of, of uh, prisoners, or they negotiate with a joint government of the Palestinian people to peace. But I would like you to, ask, to understand, I mean, in your logic, for example, you're speaking about the Jewish state, 70 years old, flourishing, prosperous, very prosperous. Do we have a future without a Palestinian state? No. We don't. We, we, uh, our future depends on dividing the country between two states for Why? the two peoples. Why? Because this country, uh, two peoples share it. We came here. As, as the magnificent record or, or, or climax mm -hmm. of the Zionist movement. Mm -hmm. And there is another people sharing the same country with us, mm -hmm. the Palestinian people. Now we can either share the land to two states for two people, or we can continue live on the sword the way Prime Minister Netanyahu put it mm -hmm. forever. So it's either fighting till the end of, of days and yeah, but at least half of killing them don't each recognize other. You as a state. At least half of them. No you know, the mutual recognition is an issue, and that was there was a, a breakthrough mm -hmm. that led to the Oslo Accord that said that uh, the, the existence of talks are the mutual acknowledgement and the mm -hmm. mutual uh, 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 recognition mm -hmm. that was uh, led the breakthrough to the first talks in the early 90s that unfortunately caused the lives of the late Prime Minister Rabin and, and in a way caused even the, the destiny of the peace process since. And also an argument to many Israelis with way. terrorist attacks also. You know, the Terror and violence is the result of not living together, of not achieving peace. So, wanna, so you know, all over the world, conflicts end, and then violence end, or at least diminish very, very. Yeah, but you need uh, recognition uh, in order to end. Uh, it's true, conflict. but you need to work to get the mutual recognition and to push from there to get what you want, which is peace, that will be the solution to the violence rather Let's than talk the problem. About that. There's the issue of coexistence, bigger picture, certainly with Israel and the Palestinians or other nations, and there's also inside Israel. So let's talk about coexistence inside. We see that all Arab Israelis, who make up 20% of the Israeli population, there's a disillusionment with those Arab parties who are breaking up. Some of them say merits might be a good place to go? Are you focusing on drawing the Arab vote? Um, definitely. Actually, we elected our uh, merits list last mm -hmm. week. We are one of the only three parties in Israel that actually have primary elections within, you know, internal democracy. And uh, numbers four and five on the list are in Muslim, Arab, and a Druze um, Israeli citizens um, representing the, the the major two minorities of the of the Arab minority. This is a great pride for us, and you know one of the biggest struggles in the last year has been against the nation-state law that uh, was conceived as humiliating for the Arab and Druze uh, minorities. And our answer for that is having a Jewish Arab. Uh, list mm -hmm. that represents all Israelis, all communities that many the Jewish and Arab uh, Israeli citizens can find themselves represented in our list and of course we expect to also gain support um, from Arab Druze and also uh, Jewish people that support equality. Now that really, I mean, we're on a real business, I mean, real campaign has started and mm -hmm. you're alone. Meretz is by itself, as it used to be in the past. Are you frustrated by the fact that you're not with the Labour Party or on the contrary, excited by the idea? First of all, I'm excited by the idea to have the opportunity to represent our ideas and, and even... the leader of a party. Right, mm -hmm. that's true. Um, it, it's no secret that last week something happened when the center um, parties united together and uh, are now running and also according to your poll they are leading um, mm -hmm. over Likud and there is a, in a way a tie between the two blocks and this is something that didn't happen for many years as you said at least 20 years we didn't see yeah. that kind of a tie with, with the center-left uh, uh, leading. Um, 
in this in this reality, I thought on on Thursday that labor and merits should actually run together to have a left unification like we saw in the center and uh, you know uh, um, make sure that the, the potential of this entire block um, be larger than the right so wing why block. Didn't it, happen? Um, it didn't happen because uh, unfortunately labor um, refused that opportunity. They um, thought that uh, it, they should uh, they are better off running uh, separately. Actually, you know, it might even um, um, bring more seats to each and every one because each and each of us yeah. have a, a unique uh, constituency. Um, I thought it was an opportunity even though sometimes I mean, risky yeah. um, to lead to uh, to another uh, direction but you'll be alone yeah logically i mean you will support of course the blue and white new party of course right. is it because they're center left yes yes so <laughs> next question follows they, this is the block you know the, okay. their center and 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 the center right uh, leaning in order to enlarge the block sure. um, so however for in order to have a center left block you need the center and you need the left mm -hmm. we bring the left so will you recommend Benny Gantz to be prime minister we will Who's recommend yeah, we will recommend any candidate right now it looks like it's Benny Gantz together with Lapid that could uh, form a center left coalition and uh, we will be the left in that center left with, with, with Benny Gantz it's easier for example to fulfill the dream of uh, for the left for the Israeli left for merits with Benny Gantz is it easier to fulfill the dream of a Palestinian state or the two-state solution I expect any Israeli government mm -hmm. to fulfill that uh, you, you call it dream I call it a, a way a path because so this is right. because this is the true interest of Israel. Mm -hmm. You know for sure that in the past right-wing uh, prime ministers uh, pursued the, the best uh, peace agreements that Israel signed uh, pri the late Prime Minister Begin with Egypt mm -hmm. um, and and uh, this is a, a peace that uh, that uh, stands still yeah. till today and uh, so it was mutual recognition. Yeah, but, but as I said, of coalition. course, mutual recognition is part of the yeah. is part of the entire deal. By the way, I, I between Israelis and Palestinians, it already happened. Mm -hmm. This is what led the Oslo Accord in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. You you express your support for this new center left bloc, center bloc, whatever you want to call it, of, uh, of Gantz and Lapid. But they do also include Moshe Alon, who has expressed yeah, very true. thorough support for the settlement and opposition to a two state solution. It's true. So that's that the that reason I will not vote for that party. That's the reason we need a strong mayor in that block to be very clear about what is the way this block should go by the way it's not only the peace issue it's also for example um, ensuring women and LGBT rights it's also um, ensuring uh, secular Shabbat and public transportation but you on will Shabbat recommend him for prime minister if he has the chance to uh, form a government we will recommend him and we will we will uh, definitely inspire to be a part of that coalition, sit in that government. For example, uh, you know that the best uh, ministers of education came from my party, Meretz. Mm -hmm. If we can have the opportunity to be the uh, minister or the, in, the, in the Ministry of Education instead of Bennett, who is now the candidate of, uh, of uh, who is now the Minister of Education, or Smotrich, or the Kahane Chai representatives, a terror organization right. that Prime Minister Netanyahu yeah. just helped get in the Knesset that you know even got the condemn of, of uh, APAC uh, that would be our advantage.